When I think of Japan, I don't think of the scenery or the temples or even the food. I think of cars, car culture, old school racers, all those parts that we wanted so bad that we saw in magazines for years. So I went there. These are his original cars. Yeah, this is the original one he took in the 70s. Join me while I travel Japan and expose car culture, both old and new. Because he likes U.S. culture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yes, yes, yes. We are very small company. Yeah. Gosh. In this series, you'll see some old faces, some new faces, and some cars you won't even believe it exist. So welcome to JDM Overload. Today we visited Spoon Sports in Tokyo, Japan. But come to find out, this awesome location with all kinds of models and products on hand is more of a distribution warehouse than it is an actual tuning shop. So they sent us down to Type 1, which is their tuning shop, where they build all of their cars and they conduct R&D for a lot of platforms that you know we're really interested in so we walk down there it's right down the street and we paid them a visit and it's one of those open style shops where you can just walk in and and look around and they're completely cool with it right away you see this awesome type r uh, civic some other platforms but another one of these s660s which i'm starting to fall in love with i saw one at hks and then one of their famous race cars They have an, an axle dyno. Which is funny to see right there in the front of their shop where everyone can see it from the street. These beautiful two-piece rotors in the rear. These wheels are actually in the Spoon Sports catalog. You can purchase them along with most of the parts that are in this video. Uh, Spoon didn't sponsor us, but if you understand heritage and uh, Honda's racing history, Spoon is pretty important. So walking around this location in Tokyo was pretty cool. Uh, we actually did this on the last day of our trip uh, before we flew out, and anyone that's interested in Spoon can go by and visit. Um, this is the in-series vehicle. So these are popular. In fact, Spoon has a whole catalog with parts for this vehicle. Wheels, brakes, uh, you name it. So the Type 1 guys were actually putting coilovers on this S660. They were adjusting the rear, uh, trying to bring it down just slightly to get that perfect fitment with the uh, Arcomp tires that they were um, putting on it. And then, of course, one of their race cars, this is their Civic Hatch, uh, pretty popular, well-known car. Uh, you pretty much don't know who Spoon Sports is without knowing what their racing platforms are, and this just seems to be one of their newer ones. This clean room is one of the reasons why I love Japan so much. So in this particular clean room, they were building a transmission. Uh, if you can see in the bottom right on the back wall, they have two spoon engines, which if you know anything about uh, the Fast and Furious series, that's, that's what Hector had coming in. There's another one of those 660s. Kind of wish we had these in the US. It seems like the aftermarket support for them is pretty crazy over there in Japan. This one had a carbon uh, rear hatch over the engine. These are turbo. Um, people turn the boost up and have a lot of fun with them. They seem to be pretty popular track cars. And then here's those spoon four pot calipers that we've seen on a lot of the vehicles inside of Type 1. 
Um, they're pretty popular. It seems like they fit a lot of, of things. I've even seen them on the EG hatch, so which means they probably bolt up to a lot of different Honda platforms. Now it seems like the cooler stuff was upstairs on the second story. There's a car elevator inside the shop that they use to bring vehicles up here. But uh, they have this pretty sick S2000 right when you walk up the stairs. It's very pretty. And then some of the more rare older EG hatches are in here. So I think most of us have built this car in Gran Turismo throughout the years. Uh, it was one of the most sought after builds uh, in the game for the longest time. But we got to see the actual car in person, which it's in pretty clean shape for a race car to be completely honest. Um, it's very well taken care of nowadays. It's sitting on the second floor and it's a pretty good showpiece. So for those of you that don't understand the difference between Type 1 and Spoon, Spoon mostly does the uh, parts purchasing, um, the distribution, that sort of thing, and Type 1 is the actual tuning shop that Spoon opened in 2001. So you can actually take your vehicle here, have it modified, have parts put on the car. They also do a lot of R&D uh, specifically for Spoon. So technically they are the same company. Uh, type 1 is just the tuning shop. Uh, they also buy and sell cars. They build a lot of bespoke cars and um, maybe potentially motorcycles. I was a little surprised to see this bike in here, but this is the famous bumper wall. It's a beautiful Civic. And it's sitting on the car elevator. That's what this is. Here's another one. This is a pretty rare Type R here. Original seats. I'm not typically a fan of the yellow exterior with the red seats, but for some reason Spoon always makes yellow work with anything. And I think it's just because it's such a, a, a well-known color for them to use. Looks like they're burping some coolant over there. There's a new Type R. Right-hand drive. Old Integra. TE37s. The original ones. I put those on a K truck before. And this is probably the most stock car I've seen here, but it's probably worth a fortune. This was a Spoon NSX engine build, along with various static displays and valve covers. It is a well put together collection. Beautiful cutaway. So probably one of the craziest things about just touring this facility in general was the fact that they were actively working on vehicles here. So this particular Civic had a brand new spoon engine in it, probably built in that clean room downstairs. And uh, these two mechanics were 
you know, working on it, getting it squared away. Um, in this particular case, they were burping coolant, like I mentioned earlier. It was just kind of cool to see, because, I mean, typically you don't, you don't see that other than maybe like a window into a shop. So it's kind of neat. So one of the coolest things at Spoon, or I should say Type 1, is this uh, Wall of Fame. So if you ever get to visit Type 1 and Spoon, make sure you go find my name. Put your name up there too. And I've noticed people have started putting photos up there, which I think is pretty safe. This is the precursor to the S2000 S800. watching over all its children. Hey, thanks for tuning in to episode three of JDM Overload. Uh, we had a great time visiting both Type 1 and Spoon. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and go find the other episodes. We have more coming out here soon, and we also have more trips to Japan planned. So uh, there'll be future episodes coming out. <laughs>